The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is Holly Christine. Hello, hello. Yes, and and again for like the umpteenth week in a row, I keep saying, yeah, we're going to do the three-host format. We haven't done it since the initial one. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like like Holly and I were talking about off mic, it, you know, schedules are, are, are getting hard to kind of pin down between three people instead of just two for this and especially since omega lives over in northern ireland now <laughs> yeah we all live in the same continent it's you know it's understandable that you would have differing schedules oh yeah definitely at least we all live in the same day <laughs> oh yeah that's true oh god <laughs> nobody lives in australia so oh yeah i mean i've actually i was actually on uh oh god whatever i forget the name of the podcast that uh vera gunn was uh hosting when she was doing the stuff on nerdvice and um Result. She's done a couple different podcasts, so yeah. I don't know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I, I if it was like officially the Nerdvice one, or if you're talking about she did one with Leon that was like pop culture stuff. I know she did one with Leon. There was one she did with Rizulka, like a couple of years ago that I was yeah. a guest on at one point, and I think it was called I think it was the Third Chair. I want to say yeah, that's what it was. It was the Third Chair. Yes, now I remember it. <laughs> My memory works in mysterious ways, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, but, uh, Rizulka, she lives in Australia, and so for Vera and me, we were up, like, late that night when we had to record it, and Rizulka's, like, I guess just, like, waking up or whatever, <laughs> or coming home, or, or however the hell it works. <laughs> yeah, I, I talk to an Aussie on a more regular basis now. I should know the difference between here and Australia. Yeah. Uh, ah, but, uh, oh well. Uh, and, you know, we actually got some feedback from the past couple of shows. You know, or at least the last show. Uh, one of them, uh, Travis from Bloody Chuckle Studios. Uh, you know the uh, Tiggo Tig forums, uh, po- not post, but thread, where uh, I think it was Hagen that started, where you give some c- critique about the previous poster's work or what have you, from mm-hmm. like years ago. Well, somebody decided to start that up on the Tiggo Tig secret Tumblr. And I was like, okay, you know, good idea. So I put myself in for it. Um, the results of when I put the results of me putting it in was on uh, last week. With a shout out there, and Travis apparently put him put himself in there, and he's like, okay, you know what, I'm gonna check out all the stuff. So he checked out all the podcasts and everything, and one of the things, one of the cons he had for this one was, uh, we you know, we needed a third person. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, we're trying, yeah, we're really trying. <laughs> oh, and next week's gonna be fun because next week is gonna be the Sunday after Black Friday. Catworks retail. <laughs> Poor girl's gonna be dead. <laughs> She's gonna be like, "Fuck you, no," <laughs> and I won't blame her at all. <laughs> I really won't. Oh, uh, but we'll have to see how that scheduling works out. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, other feedback, we did get one because last week we talked about Julian Blanc a mm-hmm. little bit and how he got his ass pretty much deported from Australia. Um, and bear in mind this comment was left on the YouTube page kind of long, so bear with me a little bit. Um, I forgot to put the name in here, but it's like one of the few in there. So so it says, uh, while your boner for justice is settling down, do realize that Julian and RSD are not actually being convicted of rape and harassment. I don't think we mentioned that. They're just being kicked out of countries to keep feminists happy. Okay. You guys could be kicked out for joking about sex as well. No, no, we couldn't. We, we yeah, could. I, I'm pretty sure that you have to do something illegal you to know, get deported. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's only taken a couple of angry letters to the immigration officials. Julian makes a parody of people who actually crave rape or repress sexuality. Really? So, so isn't he? Wasn't he the guy that was going around Japan and like like choking people and like grabbing asses and everything? Or or. No, I think it was he was forcing. I don't know anybody. Who, anybody who calls themselves a pickup artist is just a douchebag. <laughs> yeah. Um... Like I'm. I'm sorry, but like if if what you consider one of your biggest accomplishments in life uh, is being able to um, pick up other people and go on dates with them, 
first of all, you're probably not as good as you think you are. Yeah, just <laughs> just saying. <laughs> and, you know, I had the site, because he has a site. Um, What was it? Oh, yeah. PimpMyGame.com, which I took a look at because I wanted to be fair. You know, I, I like to try and, and research everything. And he talks about, you know, having good game, you know, saying it's offensive, it's inappropriate, emotionally scarring, but it's damn effective. Um, emotionally scarring is not good. Just, it's not. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, yeah, and he, he did actually um, describe himself as going to Tokyo, romping through the streets and grabbing women to, sub their, to shove their faces in his crotch. Yeah, I could, you know, no, you shouldn't do that. Ladies and guys, you know, whoever you are, if somebody is shoving their face in your crotch, um, depending on how close they actually get, if they're, like, putting the crotch, like, right up against your mouth, um, bite, if you can. If you can. I, I mean, I'm pretty you, sure you just said that backwards. I, I think you meant to say shoving your face in their crotch. I think what you just said, if I heard you right, <laughs> was shoving their face in your crotch. And Probably. Um, I, I hope your crotch doesn't have teeth. Yeah, I hope not. Uh, and I hope that I just misheard you. But if I didn't, well, then... just ha, 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 ha. <laughs> no. well, just in, well, just in case, um, if he is taking, if he, somebody takes your face and forces it into their crotch, just to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> and watch somebody in the comments be like, you know what, Holly was not hearing things. I heard that too. <laughs> oh, watch that be the thing. Uh, I, I fully recognize that I might have just misheard, but uh, yeah, that's what I thought I heard. <laughs> but because I was like, what? Yeah, well, but it, but it's also me. I, some, I, I'm, I'm sometimes I'm like early seventh doctor. I'll get things mixed up in what I'm trying to say. Basically, Although, yeah. Um, people should not be sticking their face in your crotch either. Yeah, unless that you was, have invited them. Yeah, just just don't do that. Oh, uh, it's just wow. Oh, but but yeah, this guy, he doesn't deserve. Yeah, yeah. I tried to click out of it because I actually went over to the side and it's like, no, don't leave the page. You want you? I want to make you a pickup artist. No, fuck you. The, the, I am not a pickup artist. I don't want to be a pickup artist. I am glad to say that I hadn't had to stoop to any particular schemey or skeezy thing to get all of the booty that I have gotten in my life. Has anybody ever heard of a pickup artist? who isn't purely a douchebag? Like, are there guys who are self-styled pickup artists who are actually nice people? Or do they all employ these, you know, um, I can't remember what the big one is, but like where you're shitty to a person to get them to like you? I can't remember what that's called. Yeah, I'm not sure, but, you know, hey. <laughs> oh, but, but again, the comment from the YouTube video, it is rather long. And it's right there on the previous show's page, uh, episode 123, uh, where we, we just said Masters and Ass Grabbing. That's the title, because I, I think that was Omega's fault. <laughs> uh, because, you know, sometimes we just get the titles from each other during the show. And we'll, we'll even mention it, too. <laughs> uh, oh, God. So, so that all happened. Oh, boy. Um... New new games were released this week. Um, my soul, past couple of days, has been stolen by uh, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. <laughs> Just slightly. To the point to where I had beat the main quest within about two days. Like, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, but we also did get the uh, Super Smash Brothers for Wii U as well. And yes, yes, I know people are going crazy about that. Yeah, I actually took the time to just sit there and unlock all of the characters. It took me about maybe an hour, hour and a half, because mm -hmm. it doesn't take as many battles. And I unlocked them all just so the kids could play them without having to worry about, <laughs> your new challenger has appeared! And yeah. then they come and get me every five minutes when they can't beat them. So, don't don't want to go through that. <laughs> so I said, fuck it, unlock everybody! There you go. By the way, I kick ass as Mega Man. <clears throat> of course I do. Surprise, surprise. Yes. Oh, but but with that said, it is time for our shout-outs for this week, and I, I feel kind of bad because I don't really have one. Like I said, my soul has been sucked away the past couple of days from, uh, you know, with uh, the new Pokemon games, um, so I kind of don't have one. But, Holly, do you have one? Failure. Okay. Well, I'll have one for you, too. 
Okay. Um, the first one is one that I'm probably going to have to give you um, a link to because mm -hmm. um, it's a clickbait title and it's on quick meme. So it's got like a number as part of the URL. Mm -hmm. um, but so the clickbait title is he grabs a simple carrot and a drill and what he does with it is incredible. Um, this is a guy at, I want to say Ted Sydney. Yeah, TEDx Sydney, mm -hmm. um, who uh, turned a carrot into a clarinet. Oh, and nice. it's awesome. <laughs> I was like, I want to do that. Yeah, he took a large carrot um, drilled a hole down the center and then, um, and then drilled, um, the finger holes and then put like a funnel in the one end and a saxophone mouthpiece in the other instant clarinet. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was really cool. And, and then he played it and it sounds awesome. It's like, <laughs> seriously, you, you made that out of a carrot? Sweet. And, and I will try and remember to put the links actually in the description when I post them up everywhere because I, I kind of neglected to do that last week. Oops. But yeah, you can, <laughs> um, you know, I'll, I'll try to find the, the exact URL, but you can just um, probably um, search for carrot clarinet on YouTube. Whoop. I can't imagine that there are a lot of carrot clarinet videos. And if all else fails, you'll probably just find his tutorial on how to make a clarinet. <laughs> A clarinet out of a carrot. A carrot so, net, maybe? A carrot net, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since oh. apparently my brain already wants to put those two words together. Oh, see? See, I'm not the only one. I feel I feel very better about myself now. <laughs> um, and then the other one uh, is Budget Bites. Oh. And it's how to make tasty food that's inexpensive. And it has all sorts of recipes and a lot of them too are um you know just pretty basic things that you might want to know how to do that have um good descriptions on how to do them and that's um that's budget bites with a y b y t e s dot com oh. um and uh, uh, who was yeah. it uh, uh derek the bard's wife uh emily mm -hmm. um she, she's the sailor Gallifrey. I was yeah. trying to think of her Twitter name. Yeah. Um, she's the one who pointed it out to me because she had posted a picture of some pasta that she made from there. Ooh. And I love this site. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Becky's going to enjoy it too. I, I'll even look and I'll probably be like, yeah, I'll try a few things. Cause yeah, I it's have... like make a spicy Italian flatbread pizza. Mm -hmm. Three, $3.82 for the recipe, 96 cents per serving. Nice. So it breaks it down exactly, you know, how much you're, how much it's costing you to do it, and um, it just goes to show you that you can make delicious food. A lot of it's super easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, the recipe that first got me started on looking at this site was the Italian Wonder Pot, which basically you just, it's like an onion and some spices and a pasta and vegetable broth, and you put it in a pot and just cook it. And nice. then, bam, you're done. <laughs> um, you but I also use the site to learn how to cook the perfect soft-boiled egg. Oh. And considering I love runny yolks, but I really suck at, you know, frying eggs. <laughs> soft-boiled eggs are perfect. Sweet. Oh, uh, you know, that might, I wonder if they have like a, I don't even know how, it would, if it would be a budget bite, but you've heard of. Like you've seen the thing going around with uh, like the crescent uh, pizza roll type things. Uh, that I don't remember exactly what they're called, but you know you take those crescent rolls that you can get like in the tins or whatever, mm -hmm. pull them out, get some like that string cheese, I think like string mozzarella cheese and pepperoni, wrap it up and then bake it for however long it takes to bake the actual uh, crescent itself, and boom, there you go, homemade pizza rolls. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, they have it broken down into um, breakfast, beans and grains, meat, pasta, um, various global cuisines, vegetarian, and then miscellaneous stuff. Nice. Um, so desserts, uh, stuff that you can make in a crock pot, pizzas. So it's, yeah. it's, it's very, very cool. Um, <laughs> and, oh, shoot, there was something else that I was going to say about it. Dang it! <laughs> Damn it! Damn uh, the brain. Oh, it's it's been a week. It, it has been a week. Yeah, and I have a cold, so that doesn't help. I'm like, yeah. I still can't breathe through my nose, but 
I've got like Benadryl and Mucinex in me. I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> oh, and and she she is drugged up. She is sick. She's still doing the show. She is a trooper. <laughs> oh yeah. So it's it's just an awesome website, and um, the nice part is that it's stuff that's not terribly. Oh, now I remember what I was gonna say. Oh. It's stuff that's not terribly complicated to make, and. Um, for those people who are on, you know, food stamps or, you know, have WIC for their kids or whatever, they, there's, um, recipes that specifically cater to the stuff that you can buy on those programs. Nice. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh, so with that, uh, unless you've got anything else to add on that one, cause wow, that's nope. a lot. <laughs> Uh, that'll, that'll be it for our shout outs this week I will endeavor to have the, both of the links and, and everything in the description this week I kind of failed last week and probably the week before too which is, that's, uh, that's on me I apologize for that um, but I, I, will, I will endeavor to keep them going uh, but for now we have news holy shit and it's been a week because I don't have very many in terms of the number of news stories but a couple of them we might be able to pull a bunch out of um but the first one is out of Bernadillo, Bernadillo, New Mexico. A New Mexico medical, middle school teacher, rather, is facing charges that allege he threatened a student with a knife for talking during a pop quiz, police said Monday. Pop quiz is a serious business over there, apparently. Bernadillo Police Chief Tom Romero said Benjamin... Na There's no D in that, in that city name, by the way. Bern, Bernadillo... Oh, wow. There is not. I fail at reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bernal uh, Bernalillo? I don't know. Somebody give us the pronunciation on this, but um, there's no D. <laughs> I do know that. Yeah. B R N A L I L L O. Bernalillo. Leo. There we go. Because it's probably Mexican, Spanish. Yeah. So, Bernalillo. Uh, Tom Romero said uh, Benjamin Nagurski was arrested Friday after school officials took him out of the classroom following the bizarre exchange. According to a criminal complaint, the 63-year-old math teacher threatened a student with a knife and told him to stop talking to another student. Students interviewed later by officers all corroborated the story, said Romero, whose town is 16 miles north of Albuquerque. Insert Weird, weird Al reference here. The criminal complaint said that when the student confronted, confronted Nagurski about the knife, the teacher allegedly told him, maybe next time I'll pull a machete on you. This old dude gives no fuck, and he is apparently tired of these motherfucking kids talking during these motherfucking pop quizzes. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> why Jeebus do you dude. carry a knife around? And for the love of God, I don't, I don't care why you pulled it. Like, yeah, just that, don't. Yeah, that that's not something you do. I, I you know. Maybe next time I pull a machete on you. Um, I'm I'm gonna guess there's not gonna be a next time. No, I, I hope not. I hope not. Uh, the complaint said Nagurski told investigators he only shook the knife in his hand and then apologized. He faces charges. Well, that makes it better. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh well, he apologized. Well. Oh yeah. He pulling a knife on a child is okay then. Oh yeah. No, sure. it's not, sir. No. You know, I you know around here. We have upwards of six kids running around, being loud. Oh, God, this week is fall break here. That means they're going to be here all week. Oh, sweet, bl buttery, whatever. Ah! But, you know, they, t they run my – they test my patience. They run my temper up pretty well. The youngest one is getting to the point where he is super spoiled to the point to where he can easily you know rev up the, temp the temper level. Nothing uncontrollable, so don't worry. But – you know, it, it makes me want to defenestrate them, but I don't yeah. because I know that would be wrong and that would hurt them a lot more than they deserve. And I could go to jail. So, you know, and, and a whole list of other things, you know, so I don't do that. You know, and Nagurski does face charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and possession of an unlawful weapon. Assault? He, he just... Brand, kind of brandished it at them. Is that really considered assault? Um, I think strictly what you're thinking of would be battery. He didn't. He doesn't have to touch him for it to be assault. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the school principal told Nagurski had the school principal told police rather that Nagurski had a rounded steak knife and another knife with a sharp tip and a wooden handle. 
He was jailed on ten thousand dollars bail, and it wasn't known if he has if he has an attorney. Why did he have a state knife in his pocket? Just, why <laughs> did you carry that's that? That's just weird. Like the fact that it wasn't even a pocket knife is especially odd. Yeah. Like. Yeah, but, you know, but yes, in in law, assault, um, according to Google, is the act of creating apprehension or of an imminent harmful or offensive contact with a person. Yeah. So assault is the threat. Assault um, is the threat. Battery is carrying it out. Yeah. Okay. So that that I, I, for years I've I've seemed to have thought those two was kind of those two were uh, kind of redundant there a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Assault is the threat backed up by the fact that you could actually do it. Okay. So so like if you were to say yeah I'm gonna kick you in the nuts if you were here and you looked at me and you were pissed and you had that 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 foot ready to go that would yeah. be assault. But right. if you were to do it and you're all the way up there... And, but if I actually... Yeah. yeah. If I set it from here, here it's just a threat. If I actually kicked you, that's battery. Yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> so, now that we're all clear, this is this has been your legal lesson today. Yes. Um, and speaking of legalities, see, we, we, we are smart Americans, I'd like to think. You know, just despite how I present myself in these shows at times, I am rather intelligent. Holly is rather intelligent. Uh, hell, all my co-hosts are rather intelligent. But um, apparently John Boner doesn't think so. And yes, I purposely call him <laughs> Boner because he does not deserve the fucking respect. <clears throat> Out of Washington, President Barack Obama would be calling the American people stupid if he vetoes a bill to authorize the controversial Keystone XL pipeline, uh, House Speaker John Boner said Tuesday. The House passed the bill for the ninth time last week, and the Senate is planning to take it up Tuesday. According to HuffPost's count, backers of the measure just need one more vote to pass it. Supporters of the pipeline from Canada's tar sands to the Gulf Coast say may it means thousands of jobs, while opponents say it would be an environmental disaster that would promote the burning of some of the planet's dirtiest oil. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we do See, have... I, I personally have a problem with that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, I, I, I really don't want environmental disasters, and I really think that we need to figure out how to get away from oil, whether it's foreign or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't care where the oil comes from. We need to be less dependent on it. Yeah. I mean, there's solar power, and I don't care what that one fuckhead says. Harnessing solar power is not going to destroy the sun. <laughs> I shit Somebody you Somebody actually said that? Yes! <laughs> And I double checked. I'm like, no, no, no. This has to be satirical. This has to be. I double checked. I can't even figure out how that would be possible. It's not. <laughs> I know, but I like. I can't even figure out how somebody could logic that that would happen. You know, like I... what? What is the thought process in that person's brain that that made them think? Oh well, if if we harness solar power, I mean, the the fact is, the sun already sent off the energy. It's gone. <laughs> Yeah. It's gone already. <laughs> yeah. It, see, the, the, the energy we have here is at least a few years old. I don't know how many years it takes to travel from there to here, so. But it, it, it's, it's at least a few years old. Maybe more. So we're, we're technically getting the sun's old energy. We're, we're getting its sloppy, what, 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 sloppy second, third, fourths, maybe? If we want to go by planets, because, you know, Mercury <laughs> would get the seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need to explain it. <laughs> Uh, so we're, Obama... We're not for. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. Well, no. Well, no. The sun would have it first, then Mercury would have it second. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I okay. was like... <laughs> there we go. Uh... Yeah. So uh, Obama has promised not to veto the bill, but he likely would after he said last week that he did not want to short-circuit the legal process that the State Department is going through in its long-stalled review of the pipeline. Boner, speaking at a news conference with fellow Republican leaders on the Capitol Hill, pointed to this month's GOP wins in midterm elections as evidence that Americans support the pipeline. No, you just duped a whole shit ton of Americans for voting for your people. Uh, he said Obama would be insulting them if he rejects Congress's bill. Let's be clear about this. A Keystone Pipeline veto would send a signal that this president has no interest in listening to the American people, Boner said. Vetoing an overwhelmingly popular bill would be a clear indication that he doesn't care about the American people's priorities. It would be the equivalent of calling the American people stupid. Yeah, you know what? You, 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 I'm pretty sure behind closed doors, Mr. Boner, you think the same damn thing. And guess what? You exploited it, didn't you? 
Oh, the story actually gets better. Yeah. Most Americans do support the building of the pipeline, although that support has been fading. As more Americans actually start understanding, oh shit, this could not be a good thing. And there is an update. The pipeline bill did fail to pass through, uh, what was it? The, the Senate. Senate. Yeah, the Senate. So the president is calling the American people stupid if he vetoes an overwhelmingly popular bill, which couldn't fucking get passed. Yeah. Let's, let's think about that. <laughs> it's clearly not that popular if no. it couldn't even get passed. No. No, it's just, it's just, it's just not enough, Mr. Boner. You, you, you need to go back and, 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 you know, they're actually, they're actually going to try and push forward to actually suing the president, you know, again, because it's like, yeah. really? They found a lawyer who would be, who would be willing to do it. It's like, what the fuck? Just, suing him for what? Not doing everything you said for, for being a black man in the Oval Office, not getting back out of the goddamn cotton fields where you think he belongs. Uh, you know, I mean. Is that what they're thinking? I don't know. You know, eh. they know. I don't think, at least in the cases of these Republicans that we are seeing, they don't give a shit about the American people. They care about their own pocketbooks, and they care about controlling everybody else. You know, with this pipeline, they don't care that there is alternative energies and and ways to make sure everybody doesn't die slow, horrible deaths. You know, they just want to make money. Never mind the fact that if everybody dies horrible deaths, they die too, and they can't take their money with them. Because So they're not only greedy, they're stupid. <sighs> At least I think so. <laughs> oh. So do you have any extra thoughts on this? No, no. I just loved that, that last note, the, the update. Yeah. It's like, uh, well, he didn't even have to veto it because it couldn't even get passed. But the American people are stupid. If he vetoes it. Yeah. No. 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 It yeah. turns out also, um, Mr. Bonner, that uh, the what the president does has no effect on my intelligence. Yeah, it, it doesn't. I mean, <laughs> I mean, all... he. I, I appreciate when he makes decisions that I agree with, mm -hmm. um, but it, you know, it's no reflection on me <laughs> what he decides to do. Exactly. I mean. It's just, yeah, don't, you know, if anybody's insulting the American people, it's Mr. Boner. So, yeah. Yeah. Typical, typical Boner from Boner. Hmm. Uh, boner pulled a Boner. <laughs> oh. So the next one. Almost exactly a year ago, a Walmart in Ohio made headlines for an employee food drive intended to help support their fellow Walmart workers. <sighs> Now come reports of additional stores rolling out the donation bins, showing that the retailer's employees tried to take care of one another while also spotlighting the question of whether or not Walmart is paying its associates sufficient wages. Here, here's a spoiler. They're not. <laughs> yeah, if you don't already know that Walmart doesn't pay their people enough, the fact that most people who work at Walmart also qualify for some sort of governmental assistance program yeah, and you know, when I worked there, I made... Full-time workers, even. Yeah. Not just people who are working part-time. Yeah. Full-time workers at Walmart, generally... I, I don't know what the percentage is. I'd have to look it up. Yeah. Um, I mean, but they generally qualify for some sort of assistance from the government. Yeah. And hell, even me, when I was working there in Wyoming, you know, at $9 an hour, I probably would have even, probably would have even qualified at that point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's not outside the... It's uh, Well, it's obviously a true thing. Uh, the latest bin was posted to the Facebook page of Making Change at Walmart, a union-supported group seeking higher wages for workers at the nation's largest retailer. According to the group, this box was placed in an Oklahoma Walmart. Assuming that 3430 written on the box is the store's number, then it appears to be for a Walmart supercenter in Oklahoma City. Wow. On the one hand, it's always good to see workers looking out for their colleagues, especially during the holiday months that can be particularly tough on those without sufficient resources. At the same time, Walmart critics will point to the food drive as evidence that the store isn't paying its own staff enough to afford the basics for a holiday meal. I agree with the critics. You know, I, 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 I like the idea, of course, you know, with a canned drive helping out. That's always a good thing, whether 
you know, regardless if you're helping out homeless people, whether you're helping out your fellow co-worker because the CEOs of your company decide they want to fuck everybody in the ass and pay them slave wages, you know, helping out is a good thing. Mm-hmm. So, but that being said, Walmart's fucking everybody. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of Walmart fucking everybody, I, I do have a story about Walmart because... Uh, oh, I have one too. Yeah. Um, I think I know what your story is going to be, and mine close, closely relates to this situation. Mm-hmm. So if you don't mind me going first. Oh, go ahead. There's go actually ahead. a woman who um, worked for a Walmart in the city that I live in who was fired because stuff that was supposed to be thrown out, um, she ended up donating it to local charities. What? Now, people who don't understand what that means... Um, Big box retailers um, do donate some of the stuff that they don't end up selling, but some of it they do throw out. Yeah. Um, and this this woman had received a warning, and she said, okay, well, I need to, you know, can you give me the policy on what things we're allowed to donate and what things we aren't? And they didn't. So when she came back from being suspended from work, she went ahead and still donated stuff, and then they fired her. Now, um, you know, at first her claim for unemployment was denied, and it's since been appealed and overturned because they're like, you guys didn't give her the information. There's no <laughs> there's no way that she could have known what it was that she was allowed to donate and what she wasn't. Yeah. Now, I understand the concern on Walmart's behalf here because the things that she had gotten in trouble specifically for donating – were um, display models of things. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I don't know if you've ever paid attention to store floor models in stores, but those tend to get really, really beat up. So it's like, I understand that that they're concerned about the safety and they don't... um, The idea is that um, she may be seen as specifically somebody like somebody donating on behalf of Walmart. But the fact of the matter is she wasn't all of the stuff that she had donated apparently had been received as part of anonymous donations. And so I don't know how they tracked this woman down, but yeah, they did. And she ended up losing her job because of it. Yeah. So it's stuff that Walmart's not, you know, safety aside, it's stuff that Walmart's not going to use anyway. They're getting rid of anyway. And if it had been the policy, then I, I would have had to side with them and say, okay, you know, justified. But according to what you're saying... They didn't give her the policy. Yeah. They, they straight up didn't give it to her. So the Iowa um, Workforce Development Board was like, oh, well, she didn't know. It's not her fault. Yeah. So, so I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. So it means Walmarts are... Walmart, that particular Walmart especially is a bunch of dicks. Yeah. Uh, just just got to say... But uh, the one now, the, the one that I but the ex- other thing that bothers me is like if you know that something is used when you're receiving it, I mean, aren't you already taking that risk? Like, yeah, who's gonna go then sue Walmart? Like, I, I just feel like that's being overly concerned. Yeah, yeah a little bit. I can I can definitely see that. Uh, now now my experience with Walmart was Friday because uh, we had to run over. And, uh, you know, we pick up some stuff. My mother had the idea of getting uh, two extra copies of the new Pokemon games for two of the kids because they love to play them, you know, and they wanted to get the new ones. So my mom's like, all right, I'll just put it on the card and we'll get the new Smash Brothers while we're there as well. Because, you know, all in the same place, it's all going on the card, no big deal. So we get there and we look in the electronic section and the spots for all three of those games were empty. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, you know, they're, they're popular. They're mo- much anticipated. They probably sold out pretty quickly. It happens, mm-hmm. you know. And so we got an associate, and he looked at his his little uh, handheld thing, and it said the games weren't due to release until December eighth. <laughs> uh... I'm like, I'm like, dude, no, they're supposed to release today. And it's like, uh, were they supposed to release today? I just so happened to have uh, Alpha Sapphire downloaded, and it was it was street passing at that point. I just took out my 3ds, opened it up. Yeah, it's released, dude. So he went to go check in the back. What what turns out happened was they got the shipment for all the games in, and then some dumbass decided to put all the shipment, all those games from that shipment, in the compartment where they're holding the Black Friday stuff. 
<laughs> and apparently they can't get it out. You know, for, for for whatever reason, I don't know if it's a policy reason. I don't know if it's locked and nobody else, nobody there had the key. I don't know, but some idiocy happened there. And, and that I, sounds like some bullshit to me. Yeah, a little bit. And I just, thought you were actually going to talk about the PS4 thing, by the way. The PS4 thing? I did not hear about the PS4 thing. Oh my god! Okay, so you know Walmart does price matching, mm-hmm. and. Uh, So this is people sticking it to Walmart in in return for Walmart sticking it to every other human being on planet Earth. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So they, part of their price matching thing, announced that they would price match with Amazon. Well, Amazon allows you to create your own listings for things. Oh, I see what this is going. Right, because it's like fulfilled by Amazon. So somebody created a, a, a... um, ninety-four dollar listing for the PS4. Oh wow! <laughs> they price and, matched it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody got a uh, PS4 lots for Lots of bucks. people. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> lots of people got got a one hundred dollar PS4. <laughs> it took them a while to realize what the fuck was going on. It's like, yeah, you shouldn't price match to Amazon, guys. Come on. <laughs> and you know what? You know what? If, if they were if they were a medium to lower size company, I would feel a little bad for them being duped. But this is Walmart. Yeah. They they can afford to pay their employees probably. Well, I'm sure what happened was out. like the person doing that transaction was like, uh, this doesn't sound right, but you know whatever. Yeah, I'm not paid enough to care. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're dicking you over anyway, so I'm just going to give it to you. Like, I remember once um, I had gone shopping and a friend of mine bought a pair of jeans. They had just come out, and they were supposed to be, like, 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> she goes to check out, and they ring up as 30. And I was like, what? Oh, dear. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I kind of want to get some now. And the, the checkout lady actually encouraged me to go back and pick some up. She was like, hey, hey, I'm just ringing them out for what, it, what, what comes up. I don't control that. So if you happen to buy them, it's not my fault and it's not your fault. There you go. <laughs> it is a fault in the system. You know. Oh, which, which the, the last thing with the, with the uh, Walmart story there, because uh, – because we got to move on to the other ones. Um, the the guy when he came back, he he told us the Black Friday uh, fuck up there, and then he encouraged us to go over to the GameStop, which is where we were we were going to go over there anyway because we had the pre-orders over there. Yeah. But uh, but he's like, yeah, just go over to the GameStop. They'll have them there. I'm like, wow. I wonder if he got in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, I so don't care about my job that I would tell you to go someplace else. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, hey, you know what? At least he's putting the needs of his customers first. You know, he he he, he realizes fuck up happened. Do something, tell them something to make them happy. And hey, you know, you know, if they they want the game set badly, there you go. Yeah. So, so points to him on that one. I will I will give him points on that. Oh, um, but uh, our next story. Oh, we get to talk about conservatives again. Because, of course we do. Conservatives are incensed that President Barack Obama quoted scripture in his speech this week about immigration reform, Media Matters for America reports. Scripture tells us that we shall not oppress a stranger, for we know that the heart of a stranger, we were strangers once too, the president said Thursday night. My fellow Americans, we are and always will be a nation of immigrants. We were strangers once too. On Fox and Friends, Tucker Carlson accused the president of using biblical quotations to prove that, quote, God is on his side, unquote. It's repugnant, Car- Carlson said, for this guy specifically, the president who spent his career defending late-term abortion, among other things, lecturing us on Christian faith? That's too much. That is too much. The- this is the Christian left at work, and it's repugnant. To quote scripture? That's out of bounds. Right. Um, you do realize what side you're on, Mr. Carlson. You're on the side that uses the Bible to oh, 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 push agendas that would oppress people. Yeah. So, no. 
The Bible is okay when I use it, but it's not okay when somebody who disagrees with me uses it and uses it correctly. Yeah. It's pretty much like what he basically said is, oh, uh, well, I feel guilty. So uh, he shouldn't have done it. Yeah. You know, it's not something that he did. Of course, he's, he's not going to take the blame himself. It's all the, it's all the president's fault, of course. Because, you know, uh, uh, I feel guilty. Um, 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 he made me feel guilty. Why do you feel guilty? Uh, he made me feel guilty. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, Elizabeth Hasselbeck replied, he's using it to guilt someone into supporting re immigration reform. That's not what the scholars behind the Bible would interpret as proper use. Are you fucking serious? First of all, I'm sorry, Elizabeth Hasselbeck, but you're an idiot. Yeah. Like, you've always been an idiot, but this just proves how much of an idiot you are. Um, scholars of the Bible would not interpret this as improper use or proper use because they're biblical scholars. Being yeah. a biblical scholar does not necessarily mean that you are a religious person. And they certainly don't judge how one may or may not, in, you know, use the Bible. Yeah, there, there's a phrase. It's called open to interpretation. Your interpretation is not necessarily the one true interpretation. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's not the one true interpretation because everybody else has their own. As long as they read it and don't, you know, get it from everywhere else. Oh, cause... Like if she wanted to say religious scholars, I, I would have, you know, or even Christian scholars, I would have given that a little bit more weight. Mm -hmm. um, but specifically, biblical scholars are, are there to um, not decide on the moral implications of what's said in the Bible. It's to help interpret it in historical context. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we, and of course, our our, our old quote unquote friend Mike Huckabee agreed with them, and he wrote on Facebook saying that it is interesting that Obama cites scripture as the justification for him taking unilateral action on illegal immigrants. You know, like other presidents have done, Republican presidents, I'm thinking Reagan, I think. Possibly. Yeah. And yeah. Bush too. There was a there's a list of like four recent Republican presidents who had, you know pretty much done the same thing. Yeah. Just yeah. it just going the opposite direction. Yeah, it's similar to the way that his biblical beliefs led him to oppose same-sex marriage as a candidate for election. Then, when he needed big campaign donations from gay liberals for his re-election, the Bible suddenly got rewritten. I always thought that scripture was eternal and unchanging, he had concluded, but apparently now that Obama is president, scripture gets rewritten more often than Bill Cosby's Wikipedia entry. Wow! <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Okay, so you just compared the president to the, of the United States to a guy accused of being a, a serial, I don't know if he's necessarily accused of rape, but I know that he is accused of sexual assault many, 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 many times over. Yeah. and, and These two things are not equivalent. <laughs> no, they are not. And don't, and, and you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if in the back of his mind, he thinks, well, all black people look the same. Even if you go with that, that still doesn't hold water, water because guess what? They don't. You know, maybe the hair, but that's it. It's, it, 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 you know, you know, that argument is even shut down. So, you know, just, uh, Mike Huckabee, I'm glad you were never elected. And, and please, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But um, as far as I know, um, Obama's stance on gay marriage didn't specifically change. He had always been for the idea that gay people should be married it, it it should be allowed to be married it wasn't specifically that for his campaign that he said oh gay people shouldn't be allowed to be married but more specifically the government shouldn't regulate who does and does not get married yeah i mean and for that matter i agree with him yeah i mean if you want to get married go get married fuck man i mean fuck. as far as i'm concerned the government needs to say we don't regulate anyone's marriage we have nothing to do with marriage and it, you know if to still cover people legally in that sense we need to, the government needs to start calling it something else yeah because hey you know you guys it, it's it's you know the way you put it the more it, it's kind of more like hey you know what 
You you kids here, you can't handle the word marriage without getting into a big old fist fight over it. So we're going to take the word away from you. Right. And I'm perfectly fine with people saying that the idea behind marriage is a religious one or a spiritual one. But if that's the case, then the government needs to stop calling it marriage. Yeah. So... What, the, what the government regulates and, you know, has tax breaks for and whatever, mm-hmm. that's not marriage. That has to be something else. Right. So, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and even if you want to take marriage and put it in the secular court and, and, and everything there, you still – you still shouldn't be allowed to discriminate on a legal sense. You just can't. Right, well, I'm, I'm just saying. You know, it it, it works both don't ways. Ca- don't call it marriage then. Right. Right. I mean, it's the same idea. These people have chosen to spend the rest of their lives together and combine finances and raise children and whatnot, mm-hmm. or, or not raise children. You know, but you know, these two people have made a legal commitment to each other. Okay, right. that's great. Let's make that some sort of other legal partnership, but don't make it marriage. Yeah. So, but whether we call it marriage or whether we call it someone else, the point still stays the same. Right. Don't discriminate. <laughs> Doesn't matter and what the label is. And keep in mind, I'm all for gay people getting married. Of course. Um, you know. Yeah. Shit, I, I live in Iowa. It's one of the things I'm most proud about Iowa for is that <laughs> we were there right away going, gay people won't get married? Okay. That's yeah. fine. Like, That's yay. cool. Come on over. Yeah. Come on get over. Get married. Get married. Uh, have your have your kids however you want to have them. Adopt them. Please adopt them. The orphanages and and the system is getting overcrowded. You know that sort of thing. Please adopt <laughs> if you can. Oh, but don't do what this last person did out of uh, Stockton. Um. Uh. Oh boy. A Stockton Unified School District physical education teacher is facing a charge of corporal injury to a child and is on paid leave after video surfaced of him trying to force a 14-year-old girl into a pool during a PE class. Why is this douchebag still getting paid? I, I would like to know, too. Denny Peterson, employed by the school district for more than 10 years, is seen on a video for 95 seconds using strong force to drag the girl toward the pool at Edison High School. The incident. From, from what I saw, he was dragging her by the foot, too. Oh, no. That, yeah. No, 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 no. So, you don't so she's, like, laying on the ground, and he's dragging her. Jeebus! Oh. I, at this point, I hadn't seen the any videos with it, so... <laughs> so she's got one up on me there. Um, but the incident happened in late August, and much of it was captured on video by another student. Gilbert Samara is a Stockton attorney representing the girl and her family. Regardless of her participation in the class, it should disgust you how this man put his hands on a 14-year-old girl. She said multiple times, my top is falling down, Samara said. He is preparing a claim and likely a lawsuit over the struggle. Peterson was put on paid leave for a month immediately following the incident, but was then brought back and assigned to another Stockholm, Stockton campus. Only Thursday, when News 10 notified the school district Peterson was facing a misdemeanor charge of corporal injury to a child, was he placed on leave again. This is the district's response to the incident. The video and the punishment of Peterson. Uh, SUSD has taken appropriate action in this case. The teacher has been placed on paid administrative leave per district policy. Um, that's pretty shitty policy, uh, considering there is video evidence of him doing this to a 14-year-old girl. Uh. Yeah. I mean, she's she's like hanging on to this bar. I I went ahead and sent you a link, and I think it the video starts somewhere around the, the video of um, him going trying to pull her starts at like thirty seconds. Right. Um, but you know she's hanging on to this bar, and he keeps trying to drag her, and so you know he he grabs her by the hands, pulls her hands away, drags her that way, tries to grab her feet, you know, and she she starts to kick at him. Um, and then eventually is dragging her by the arms. Yeah. So, so, so he tried, you know, both by the by the hands and by the feet to to drag her into the pool. Yeah, it, that that is not a good thing to do. Yeah, if you have an unruly student, you want them to hello hello doggy. Uh, you have an unruly student, and you also have an unruly dog, who um, doesn't want to get into the pool for whatever reason. You don't get physical with them like that. You don't do that. You... Yeah, it's just ridiculous, and because I don't know if this story actually said anything about it, but the thing, what happened was, oh yeah, okay, at the end, it says um, she hadn't wanted to get her hair wet. Yeah. 
So what happened was, she says, I swam laps like the teacher asked, but I did not want to get my hair wet. Right. Um, adding that she didn't swim fully under the water because she didn't want to get her hair wet. Yeah, which should be perfectly fine. And so then, supposedly, the teacher grabbed her and started dragging her into the water. Yeah. Samara said the teacher had the option of punishing her academically, but not physically. Yeah, okay, you know, dock dock some points off if need be, fine, whatever, you know. I don't know what the event was. If it was prom, then I think the teacher should have been a little more lenient. But prom this early in the the school year, probably not. Um, I think it was a cheerleading thing. Yeah. Okay. So, so even then, cheerleading, you know, it's it's most likely a school function. You should be a little, a little more lenient. If it was a personal function, that'd be a whole different story. But this is a school function, so mm-hmm. a little bit, a little leniency would be good. Yeah, she had a cheer competition later that day. Yeah. Uh, and and at in the end, the the Samara. Not the Samara, but Samara is quoted saying, no means no and stop means stop. This isn't a situation where she's attacking a teacher and he's defending himself. When a woman or a 14-year-old says no, it means no. And that is true. Yeah. That, that is something every time, like, you know, even with these kids, every time I hear one of them, like, screaming no, don't do that. I don't care if it's a boy or a girl. And they, they're continually harassed and, and it's not stopped. I will step in. I don't care who else is around. I'll say, no, you, you back off. She kept telling you no. Yeah. So, you know, they, that's – so I'm trying to get it early as much as I can. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, he, her top was coming down. She asked him to stop. He didn't. He just said, it's all right. Um, and at one point, he could be heard asking other students to join in and tickle her um, as he held her legs – while she was on her back near the pool. So that's when she's hanging onto the bar and he's trying to get people to tickle her to, to make her let go. Really? Yeah, to drag her in. Dude! That, that, that's, that's not cool to begin with and, and you're trying to get other people in. It's just, no! No, 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 no. You don't, you don't, no. No! You just, no! No! Uh. Yep. Uh, fucked up. Very, very seriously fucked up. Very much fucked up. Oh, so, so we got about a little extra, a little time left. Uh, eight minutes left in the show. Um, so I, I have like a whole shit ton of links <laughs> that that um that that I have been trying to go over and look at as well. Um. You know what? I've, I've got this thing. It's from addictinginfo.org. I put it in one of the constructive deconstruction files, but I'm going to pull it up here because it looks like something we could just go over rather quickly. Um, it's top 10 quotes that prove that neurosurgeon Ben Carson doesn't have the brain to be president. And just just for the sake of, of clarity and, and transparency, this was posted on the 15th. So, so yeah. So Dr. Ben Carson... He is a Republican candidate for the presidency, and of course it comes with a media scrutiny that includes reviewing his past remarks and making him answer for them. As a neurosurgeon, Carson is no doubt brilliant, but his various statements during his foray into the world of politics demonstrate that he doesn't have the brain necessary to run the country as president. And apparently Doggy agrees. <laughs> oh. I don't know, she apparently sees something outside. Yes. Uh, well, maybe it's Ben Carson. Hmm. Nah, I, I don't think he's a stalker, no. Uh, but uh, number one quote that they have here, uh, there comes a time when people with values simply have to stand up. Think about Nazi Germany. Really, we're going Godwin? Most of those people did not believe in what Hitler was doing. But did they speak up? Did they stand for, up for what they believe in? They did not, and you saw what happened. And he was comparing Democrats mm-hmm. to Nazis just this past January. Uh, it gets worse the next quotes about Nazis too. Oh God, God damn it, God winning, God damn it. <laughs> oh, I mean, America is very much like Nazi Germany. Oh shit, he, he's he's in trouble now. And I know you're not supposed to say Nazi Germany, but I don't care about political correctness. Uh, how about just actual correctness? Fuck the political correctness. You know, you had a government using its tools to intimidate the population. We now live in a society where people are afraid to say what they actually believe. Um, no. On how America is like Nazi Germany because of liberals. 
bullshit. If that were true, Fox News would not fucking exist. By the way, Nazi Germany refers to Germany in a specific era and not, in fact, Germany itself in the modern day. Yeah. Which apparently he doesn't get. It's like, if you called everybody in Germany now a Nazi, yeah, you're a fucking douchebag. But if you're talking about Nazi Germany, the rest of the population of Earth assumes that you mean (laughs) Germany in the past. Yeah, specifically Germany under Hitler. Yes. Uh, Knock him out, put him in the closet. Let's do that. Uh, Number three, uh, Obamacare is the worst thing that has happened in this nation since slavery. In a way, it is slavery because it's all... (laughs) Because it is making all of us subservient to the government. Um, How? That's what I want to know. How? Affordable health care <laughs> with the government stepping into the market. How is that slavery? That's not. It, it, it just isn't. You know, you know. And really subservient to the government. So, um, so what about all these laws that we have that we have to that we I have know, to abide sort of by? I'm sort of like that's that's sort of the purpose of government in a way to kind of keep people in line. Yeah, and this was a quote from uh, last well, not this uh, October 2013, last year. Ah. I mean, it's reciprocal, and people serve the government. The government serves the people, but yeah, still, it's it, it's a it's a symbiotic relationship, or it's supposed to be. Yeah. Mm. Number four, because 9-11 is an, is an isolated incident, things that are isolated issues are as opposed to things that fundamentally change the United States of America and shift power from the people to the government. That is a huge shift. You have to take a long-term look at something that fundamentally changes the power structure of America. And he's claiming Obamacare is worse than the 9-11 terrorist attacks that killed 3,000 Americans. This yeah. was June. So, yep. so Obamacare to him is worse than not than slavery and worse than 9 11 yep wow and you want to talk about things that fundamentally change the u.s of a um i i have three letters for you tsa just saying mm. Let's see number five I think what's happening with the veterans is a gift from God to show us what happens when you take layers and layers of bureaucracy and place them between the patients and the healthcare provider. And if we can't get it right with the relatively small number of veterans, how in the world are you going to do it with the entire population? Ben Carson thanking God for dead soldiers in an attack on Obamacare amid the veterans' military affairs healthcare scandal in which veterans died waiting for medical care this past Memorial Day weekend. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, okay, I, uh, we need more funding for the soldiers. Bring them home. That's going to cut military spending because they're going to be here. You know, you, you, then you can take all the money you were going to spend on the big weapons and, and keeping people out there in the field, put it back into the soldiers to raise their pay because they don't need to go into high-risk areas. You don't need to send the equipment to high-risk areas. They're here. You can pay them more. Stationed here, I think. No, oh, Pixie. Pixie agrees, I think. <laughs> yeah. Don't never, never let it be no, never let it be said that I do not appreciate uh, um the peanut gallery. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, number six. No, no, peanuts bark is much lower pitched. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does have two dogs. One of them is named Peanut. Yes, one of them is Peanut. <laughs> yes, for, for those, if this is your first show. Um, uh, let's see, number six. My thoughts are that marriage is between a man and a woman. Oh, God. Uh, it's a well-established fundamental pillar of society, and no group, be they gays, be they Nambla, be they people who believe in bestiality, it doesn't matter what they are, they don't get to change the definition. And, of course, guess what? He's, <laughs> he's comparing it to bestiality and pedophilia, April of 2013. Uh, no, 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 no. The definition of marriage, it, it, it could be changed. It's been changed over the years. It'll be changed again. And it'll probably be changed in about 500 years down the road, too. If that long. So words change. Language changes. Regardless of how many of us, and I admit I am, I am among them sometimes, how much we don't like some of the changes that are being made. Language grows and evolves. And if you can't deal with that, then go fuck off. 
just all right. And yes, I can direct that very easily to my own self because I've bitched about it myself. So, <laughs> oh, but uh, number seven. Certainly there's the potential because you have to recognize that we have a rapidly increasing national debt, a very unstable financial foundation, and you have all these things going on like the ISIS crisis. ISIS crisis. <laughs> ISIS crisis. <laughs> there you go. That could very rapidly change things that are going on in our nation. And unless we begin to deal with these things in a comprehensive way and in a logical way, there is no telling what could happen in just a couple of years. And this is him telling Fox News that President Obama <laughs> might declare martial law and cancel the 2016 election so he can continue being president in, in just, you know, back just in September. Why would he do that? Uh, yeah, I know, right? You know, there were actually, I don't know how prevalent it was, but I know there were some people that were afraid that W was going to do the same thing back on 2008. You know, cancel that and let him be president. Because it's just, it obviously it didn't happen, thankfully. But I, I don't think any side, any politician is going to be that blatant. Yeah, no, I don't think any anyone would do it, especially when, you know, we're not actually, um, you know, fighting a... a Real war? No. What What are we fighting? What are we fighting for? We're fighting terrorists and various conflicts uh, around the globe, but as far as I know, none of them are declared wars for the U.S. Yeah. So in other words, but we're... more importantly, um, no government official would do this because all they risk is being assassinated. Pretty much. Which, yeah, that... that... People would not care for that. Hmm. Uh, number eight, I think most people, when they finish that course, they'd be ready to sign up for ISS, ISIS. Rather, I was about to just spell it out. Men, when he's claiming the AP history curriculum will cause students who learn about civil disobedience in the country to join a violent terrorist group. And this was back in September. Because That's right, guys. Colorado did the, who was Colorado, right? Uh, what's Columbine, right? You thinking? No, what? I'm thinking about the state that that the students ended up having to protest because they weren't being taught about oh. civil disobedience. That was Colorado, right? Uh, might have been. Um, we'd, have to, we'd have to look it up and see. Uh, somebody in the comments will remind us. We might have covered it. I don't know. But, but regardless of whatever state it was, no, it, it, it's, it's, it's not going to... No, not a violent terrorist group. In fact, you know, yeah, a lot of the protesters in Ferguson, from, from what I'm seeing... They're mostly nonviolent. The only people that are getting violent are people are you know fucking trolls that go in there and just stir shit up, just to stir, stir shit up, and the fucking cops. So, yeah, you want a terrorist group? Ferguson PD. And they've got the KKK on their side, so that says something. Mm. Number nine: Anyone caught involved in voter fraud should be immediately deported and have his citizenship revoked. Advocating for stripping non-citizens of their non-existent American citizenship if they are caught voting just this month. And the quote was later removed from Carson's WND column. Ah, oh, the World Net Daily. Or the Wing Net Daily, depending on how you want to look at it. Hmm. It's just... Yeah, voter fraud. That, that, that's such... Why... Right. If you're voting illegally because you're not a citizen, you should have your citizenship revoked. But you don't have the citizenship. I don't care. It's going to be revoked. Uh, but I don't have it. You can't revoke it. Well, I'm double revoking it. <laughs> double revocation. Yeah. And the last one, number 10. So if there were a container of a contaminated urine and somehow managed to find its way to some place, a lot of damage could be done. Sometimes someone comes up to a lab worker. He knows he's got the urine. How would you like to have a million dollars? Such things have been known to happen, and this is in fear-mongering over Ebola by saying it to be used as a biological weapon, even though infectious disease experts disagree. And this was from August. Note how most of these are within the last year. Well, last year, last two years. This guy does not know. No. I, I mean, he, he might be good, you know, and he's a fucking doctor. He deals yeah. with science shit. You know, he's a brain surgeon, uh, but, you know, uh, I'm not, no, 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 I wouldn't even go to him for that because he, he, he might think that, you know, uh, no, no. Although, yeah, to be honest, that's a guy I don't really trust near my brain. No, I would rather not, no, 
No, I'm, I'm sorry, just no, can't do it, no. So, um, with that, that is that takes us up to the end of our show. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for listening this week, and hopefully next week, we'll f- schedules will sync up it, and we will have a, a more regular three host thing. Though I don't know if it's going to happen because, like I said, Black Friday is coming up, and 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 I've ranted about it the past couple of shows. If you're going to protest, go protest the fuck out of Walmart. Please do it. Take pictures. Take video. You know, yeah, all that good stuff. I want to see it. And and if you have to go out on Black Friday, be careful. I, I, I would rather everybody stay home and be safe, but you know, people aren't going to do that. There are probably people camping out at Best Buys all over the country waiting for those Black Friday deals. And probably have machetes too. Because Black Friday is serious business. Why not just have the deals all year long? Or have it more than just one day? You know, there are alternatives. But, yeah, Asking a corporation to change is like trying to, you know, redirect a river. With a shovel. Yeah. So, anyway, with all of that said, uh, if we wanted to find Holly on social media, where could we find her? You can find me all over the various social medias as GookyGox. G-O-O-K-Y. G-O-X. Um, so Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Vine. Although most of my Vine is really peanut. So. <laughs> yeah. If you like doggies, go to her Vine. Yeah. <laughs> and for that matter, my Instagram lately is mostly peanut too. There you go. Oh. Um, <laughs> so really, if you like peanut, follow me on social media. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, um, my Facebook fan page is Holly Christine Brown, and you can also find me over at Nerdvice. Sweet. And and I am still glad to say that, that we have the new bumpers up, so I don't have to go into till mu- so much of a spiel. Uh, if you want to find me on social medias, I'm on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And everything else is in the spiel. So um, stick around. You get all the rest of that information, including my Patreon information, if you guys like the show. So um, – Thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine, signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.